Listen to the show with me. I've got fighter Frank Greaves. How are we doing, Frank? Really good, mate. Better now that sparring's finished, but yeah, really good, thanks. Interesting journey, Frank. You're getting ready for your third professional contest. We're used to seeing you in the corner as a, as a, well, a coach or a trainer, if you like. How have you made that transition from trainer to fighter? Uh, I, exactly. I couldn't tell you. It's just one of these things that sort of morphed over the years. I, I thought about doing it years and years ago and never got round to it. It was too busy with training fighters. I had a few retirements, a few injuries. Got a bit more time on my hands and thought one, better now rather than waiting until I'm 40, 41, 42 and say, I could have done it. Get in and do it. Life's too short for talking about it. How are you finding it so far? It's tough. It's tough. Obviously, at my age, the aches and pains, that, you know, it's hard. The training's tough. The lifestyle I love, I've lost weight, I'm sleeping better, I'm eating better, I'm looking after myself, no booze. I love the lifestyle, I just wish I was 10 years younger. Brother of cult figure, Johnny Greaves, as we said before, there wasn't a card probably three or four years that didn't have his name on it for a long period of time. What advice has Johnny given you about going into the paid ranks? Duck. Basically duck. No, I mean, he's just learned from his mistakes. Obviously, I was with him for the majority of his journey, so learn from his mistakes, make sure I'm fit, make sure I'm ready to get in there, don't get in with injuries. Just... Flat sensible, you know, I'm, I'm fighting in the away corner. There's not too much pressure on me. I ain't had the pressure to do tickets and whatever else. So just get in there and enjoy it more than anything. He wishes he'd give anything to go back five years and have half of his career again. So just enjoy it. Take it all in. You know, just love what you're doing. No smoking before bouts then, I take it? Uh, well, you know, the, the odd cigar. But no, no, honestly, nothing like that. It's ridiculous some of the things he did. But no, no, I mean, I'm, I'm literally, I am living the life 100%. You know, food, diet. So, so, I mean, I ain't had a drink for eight years, months, and I love a booze. I ain't had a drink, you know, I've lost a load of weight. I, I feel great, you know, so long way to continue. It's interesting because someone said if Johnny Greaves had your lifestyle, he could have prolonged and maybe got to 150 fights. Now, is, do you think that's a factual statement? A hundred percent. If John lived and trained how I live and train now, especially if he'd have turned over a bit younger, I, I'm convinced that Johnny had titles in him. Now, my, maybe minor ones, maybe area, maybe would have boxed for the English. The kid had heart, he had a great chin, you know, what a fighting spirit, but he never had the dedication to go with it. I mean, now I'm doing what I'm doing. I, I'm actually amazed that he got to 100 fights living and, and, and fighting the way that he did. Um, and it's testament to his guile and his ring craft that he did that, uh, you know, because I certainly couldn't do it. It's tough enough as it is, and I'm living it. I'm training twice a day, I'm eating right, as I say. Uh, so Harry did what he did, it's amazing as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you train with Ian Burbage, he's, he's now officially your trainer. Any aspirations of getting Ian Burbage to put the gloves on and get him that side of the canvas, so to speak? I keep trying to talk him into a spa, but obviously he's taught me everything he knows. So, you know, he, he, knows, he knows how it's going to go. But no, Ian's, Ian's absolutely great. I think boxing philosophy-wise, we're on the same page. You know, we really fight pretty similar. So instantly, there's no, he doesn't struggle to get anything over to me. He tells me something. I instantly understand what, what he wants me to do. Getting in there and doing it is something different, but at least having the understanding, being on that same page, when I look at him in the corner, you know, he don't have to reiterate. He don't have to tell me twice, I know. So that, that's a great thing to have when you're sitting down on that stall and you're minute off to have someone there and, you know, you, you, you're together. It's great. Yeah, he's, he's brilliant. I wouldn't do it with anyone else. Getting to ready for your third fight now in preparation, in camp aspirations to get to 100 fights is this something you've thought about and how long do you think your body can go on for absolutely none at all mate uh, no nah, i mean for me literally it's, it's a one-year deal um i'm medical until september i'm gonna box you know fairly regular until then see what happens i mean obviously if i go and win the next five fights or something like that and someone says we can give you an area title in march or something i'll do it but no nah, it's pretty much a, it's a one-year deal so I, i'm gonna take it one at a time i've got this one coming up next week if I win it, whatever, if I get a phone call for three weeks later, a month, as I say, I'm living the lifestyle, so I'm always ready. I can take one on short notice, or maybe I might not box boxing again for three months. So we'll see how it goes. I, I really don't know yet, but yeah, probably, probably a one-year deal. Well, you said you've had aspirations to fight on TV. You've now been on the cast as an elder show, so I hope this ticks off a little box for you, mate, and we appreciate it, you know? I might even pull out of the fight next week. That's it, my career's done. I've reached the pinnacle, mate. I'm, I'm on the cast as an elder show on Box Nation. It's brilliant. No one likes a smart ass, Frank. Thank you very much, mate. Nice one, James. Cheers, mate.